Dave, you know, one of the things I'm really proud of as I get the opportunity to travel and, you know, meet other police services and see their operations is that I always come back with the mindset that we work in one of the most professional organizations in all of North America. We have some really awesome programs. I know that you yourself have been involved with K9 for quite some time, but when I think specifically about the breeding program that we have here in the city of Winnipeg, the only one of its kind in North America, and I know that you really were a huge proponent behind this, can you tell us just a little bit about that program? And again, share with our citizens something else that we have really every right to be incredibly proud of. Yeah, for a municipal department, we are the only ones that I know of in North America uh, that breed our own, uh, own canine partners. Uh, it's first started in 1999, and uh, since then we've bred approximately 120 pups. Mm -hmm. uh, pups have been sent all over North America, far uh, west of Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, they supply all of our own dogs uh, here in the city, as well as all the, the services that we train as well, like Brandon Winkler Morden. Uh, Far south is uh, Grand Forks, Fargo. Uh, we send a lot actually to the state of Minnesota as well. So most of our pups are actually pretty well sold two to three times over before they're even born. Wow. So real high demand uh, due to the quality of the, the dogs that we're actually producing. That's pretty impressive. Now, what led you to believe that this would be a good thing for the Winnipeg Police Service to be involved in? Like, what's your history with the canine unit? Oh, <coughs> what happened is I started in uh, about 1995, and we actually, prior to that, we brokered in dogs for the service. What had ended up happening was we were trying to broker in two dogs. The broker didn't uh, produce the dogs for the service, and we actually had to start legal proceedings against the broker. Mm. So that's what kind of prompted me to start breeding our, our own dogs. Uh, the RCMP started their program pretty well at the same time because they were facing the same struggles that we were. Uh, to get good quality dogs at an affordable price was a real challenge for everybody. So that's real leadership. And uh, again, when I mentioned earlier that as I travel, I see that here in the city of Winnipeg, we really do take the lead in many areas. Our officers are fairly innovative, and sometimes I think in the city of Winnipeg, we think about ourselves as second class, but definitely we're not in terms of the breeding program. Absolutely, yeah. as well, the, the, you just mentioned dedicated officers. Like there, we have a quarry program of 60 some quarries, I believe 62, that are actually, uh, we draw upon to actually help train our dogs, raise our pups, huge dedication for them. It really, uh, other than the, uh, the rewards of raising the pups, um, that's pretty well all they get out of it. So it, it's a real, um, how can I say, I'm really proud of the quarries that okay. we have. And in the end, they actually make future, uh, future handlers and the quality is uh, getting better and better every year. And so how many canines do we have active right now within the Winnipeg Police Service? Uh, we have 12 uh, dedicated members, uh, 14 dogs that are actually working street, including two specially explosive dogs. Mm -hmm. But within a program itself right now, we have 23. That's including our breeding stock and the pups in training. And can you just share with the public a little bit about how those canines assist us in terms of providing safety for our citizens? Yeah, our bread and butter, what we do actually the most is actually tracking. Uh, so when uh, somebody breaks into uh, mm -hmm. one of our citizens' homes or, or robs a business or uh, gets in a high-speed chase and flees on foot, uh, the canine is called in. So we play what we call a game of hide-and-seek. So it, it's the greatest game that we play. Uh, general patrol officers are a real asset to us. The helicopter is a huge asset in regards to trying to contain the, the suspect uh, once they flee, and then we, we get sent in with the, with the dog. So probably our 90% of what we do is actually tracking the apprehension at the end or, or hopefully the suspect will give up. We don't have to have a bite at the end. As well, the drug detection is huge. Uh, article searches for, for evidence, uh, explosive searches at the airport. Winnipeg Jets, we do a lot of work with them. Great organization. Uh, as well as PR. People love the dogs. Like uh, for a unit, I, we probably have more po positive PR for the service than a lot of other units just because of the, the the canine factor. Everybody loves the puppies. That's right, and the, uh, the puppies are huge. They start off with puppies, right, nice and cuddly, but when they become fully trained dogs, they're not really that cuddly little puppy Not as much. They, no, you know, right. the, uh, again, the mindset's changed in the last 15, 20 years. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, what people were looking for was a big, tough, growling, snarling dog. Mm -hmm. That's totally not what we're looking for now, especially now with being able to raise our own pups, um, breed them, raise them. We're able to socialize them so that actually they're a lot friendlier and a lot okay. more, um, uh, way more interaction with people. Right. So for most of us police officers, we have a partner that we work with very closely. What's the relationship like between the handler and the dog? You know, un unless you're a handler, to experience it, it it's hard to explain. Like I spend more time like, with my canine partner than I do with, the, with my wife, my daughter, and that, that bond is inseparable. Uh, that dog will put his life on the line uh, and not even think about it. Mm -hmm. That's so it's hard to put words um, to that relationship. 
Uh, one of the toughest uh, decisions we ever have to make is A, the day that we have to retire our canine partner, and secondly, the day we have to put them down. Really, really tough. They, they become part of our family. There you go, and that's an important piece that I think is really important for people to understand, uh, just that relationship. And now really, you rely on your canine partner as much as we would rely on a, another partner that we might have. Oh, absolutely, yeah. 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 And uh, the hours we spent with our partner, unlo unlike a partner in a cruiser car, at the end of the night, I take my partner home. So, and on days off, I'm with my partner. Anything else that you'd like to tell the public about the, uh, the canine unit here in the city of Winnipeg? It was, it was a, how can I say, it was a lot of hard work, but mm -hmm. we got a brand new facility here. Uh, the executive has been great, a great supporter of us. Uh, it was uh, obviously cost a lot of money, but uh, they saw for the future as well, not Correct. just the present. So we have a state-of-the-art facility that will not only meet our needs today, but next 40 to 50 years. So in return, the citizens will have the best product that we believe we can produce on the street and in return serve them and help protect them and uh, the property and the, their lives as well. I think we're proving the point again just very clearly when I say I'm so proud to be part of this organization because it is one of the best police organizations in all of North America. And a large part of that goes through the work that you're doing here with the K9 unit. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. All right.